Getting ready for the second half kickoff here at ARC Stadium with Richmond Academy leading Aiken 24 to 7. Well, and not only that, Richmond has the 17-point lead, but they'll also get mm -hmm. the ball to start the second half. And if you're aching, you've got to get them off the field. Get a stop, get your offense on the field, and try to do what your game plan was to begin the game, and that's establish the run, whether it's Green or Thomas or whoever. They've got to get some uh, a drive going and put some points on the board. You can't give Richmond another score and fall behind further. You need some points uh, in this third quarter to get back in this game. Aiken trying to beat Richmond Academy for just the second time ever. Again, we mentioned at the start of the broadcast, these two teams haven't met since 1975. 1972 was the only time Aiken's ever beaten Richmond Academy, so it hasn't happened in my lifetime. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, again, those were some powerhouse Richmond mm -hmm. teams in the 50s and 60s that Aiken had to contend with. And it's unfortunate they haven't played. These are two story programs. Uh, Aiken certainly had their run, and then especially in the eight, in late 80s and early 90s, they were a great program here. And uh, I'd like to see it. You mentioned they were supposed to play last year, mm -hmm. but unable to play due to inclement weather. And hopefully this is a renewed rivalry we'll see every year. We are underway in the second half, and it is... Terry Bland, the up man, taking the kickoff to midfield for Richmond Academy. 13 region titles for Richmond Academy in their school's history, but they haven't won the region since 1976. Yeah, it was unfortunate because one of the great Richmond teams they had since then happened to be in 1995, mm -hmm. and there was a pretty good team called Josie right down the road, and <laughs> Richmond gave them fits. I think the final score in that game was 13-6. to six. They had a kid named LeVar Rainey that was unbelievable. Uh, Frank Caputo coached that team for Richmond, and they've had some good squads over the years, but you're right, no, not that major, major success uh, outside just beating the local teams in quite some time. About to drop some knowledge on you after this play, A.B. Uh-oh, here we go. Future Augusta Stallion, LeVar Rainey. That's true. That's I forgot about that. LeVar did play some uh, time with uh, with Augusta. Man, he was such a good athlete and, uh, you know, gave his heart and soul in that game against a really good Josie team. That Josie team, by the way, went 15-0, Won the state championship and uh, featured Dion Grant, mm. Troy Tolbert, R. Mark Tolbert, P uh, Percy Bland, John Fielding. They were just loaded. Second and eight. And the carry is Knowles. First down and a big hole up the middle inside the 30-yard line to the Aiken 29. I right, man, I'm watching it more now that Nathan said it. When he sets that plant foot, mm -hmm. it's almost like he, it, you know, he's supercharged out of, you know, got some nitrous or something. Because right when he plants, he hits that pole and goes. And, Good, good looking young running back, Knowles. I thought you were going to go Le'Veon Bell on me, how he sort of sort of stops waits, and surveys, yes, waits yes, and surveys the, the scene a little bit. Three wide for the Musketeers on first down from the Aiken 30 yard line. And the give this time is going to be to Mondarius Taylor. He's got room around the right side, but it looks like it might come back. A flag falls down at the 32 yard line. Well, I'll tell you, Aiken's number 28. We mentioned his name quite a bit in the first half. Uh, for the Aiken defense, number 28, David Neal. He's only a sophomore. He's only had a lot of plays tonight in that secondary, and that time he saved what could have been maybe a touchdown. And the hold will negate the run. Richmond Academy, two-time state champions, 51 in 1956. Aiken won South Carolina State back in 19. On the offense, 10-yard penalty. You play one. Back in 1992. Back in the day, mm -hmm. Pat and Nat Dye, of course, that went on to play at Georgia, and Pat Dye the longtime Auburn coach. And both of these schools, these programs have been, I don't want to use the word victims, but have uh, used to be the, the only school in their, in their county. Yeah. And now, you know, they have so many different schools, it's hard to keep the same talent base. So now it's first and 20, or four, first and 16, I should say. And again, it's Taylor and nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, dropped for a, about a yard loss back at the 38 yard line. So while we have a moment, one thing we like to do in the third quarter of each week, Game Night Live, is Ashley Brown welcome in a special guest from McDonald's. That's right, and tonight we've got uh, Kevin Hamilton, who's a local shift manager with McDonald's. Kevin, which uh, branch are you located at? Right there by the old Kmart. There you go, the old yeah. Kmart. And now, how long have you uh, been with McDonald's, and when did you get your start? I started January 27, 2012. Been so you've been years. with them five years now, and mm. uh, in that five years, you worked your way up to shift manager, and I know it probably wasn't always fun, but it seems like, uh, you know, the, you guys on the weekends, you got the crowds in there. It seems like you guys do find a way to have a good time and enjoy what you're doing, too. Yes. I mean, we're a pretty good family. Yeah. Been there so long, we all know each other. 
in and out. We were together like football. There you go. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, and you, you got to come up with a game plan. Speaking of that, you guys, I know, have some of the students from around the area working at your stores, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then uh, let's get this play in and we'll get back to uh, Kevin Hamilton with McDonald's, our sponsor. Our sponsor's here on Game Night Live as Kyle likes to throw that one away. And did you play sports back in high school, back in the day? You look like you could have played some football. I tried to play football. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to have a little problem. But, but, it, but it, it does seem like kind of athletics, student athletes and McDonald's sort of go hand in hand. That's why it's yes. such a good thing with you guys being a sponsor. Uh, everybody congregates at McDonald's. That's the hangout. And is that still the case over at your store? Sure. I mean, you're right on it, yes. I mean, we have a lot of sports activity coming through the yeah. – in and out the city today. We, we have a lot of people to stop by. Absolutely. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for what you, you guys do. Thank uh, you. Uh, Kevin Hamilton, shift manager with one of our local mm. McDonald's. We appreciate him so much stopping by. Stop over and see uh, uh, see Kevin when you get the opportunity at the old Kmart lo- uh, near the old Kmart location uh, in Richmond County. Kevin, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate Our that. Buddy. Kevin Hamilton yeah, with McDonald's. And uh, our guest tonight, and each week we bring you a rep from McDonald's, uh, all the way leading up to our big border bowl coming up in January. You bet. And while we were talking to Kevin, I think the Aiken Hornets would just assume we keep talking to Kevin all night because <laughs> things were going their way yeah, during yeah. that interview. Uh, Richmond Academy went backwards three yards and uh, then had to punt it away. And uh, n- Another couple of bad snaps on uh, the drive there for Richmond Academy. And uh, Judson Pickett, the punter there, lucky to get that one away. It could have been a big play for Aiken. Uh, Lyle Burns there was letting the folks know he mm-hmm. was not pleased with what was happening on the field. Let's put it this way. He's a probably 30 yards away from us. We don't need microphones to hear him up here in the press box. <laughs> He's a fiery guy. That's kind of what he's known as, just a super competitor, real fiery kind of old-school coach. And uh, good to see him finally get his shot as a head coach in the area. First and 10 from the 16. It is Green, and he's got a couple of yards to the right side. And Green has been the game-breaker for Aiken, uh, right around 80 yards rushing on the night. And, of course, he had the big touchdown. But aside from that, they haven't been able to get much going. Thomas has had a couple of nice runs, but – you know, they need to go back to what they did. That first drive, the offensive line was blowing Richmond off the ball. Since then, those Richmond linebackers, you know, the line has been stuffing things, and those linebackers have been free to make tackles. He actually ended up with five on that first down carry. This is going to be Thomas. He'll pick up the rest of it and be up near close to a first down, and he might have it across the 20-yard line. Well, Thomas made a nice cut to get out to that right side and pick up some nice yardage there. I had to kind of jump over a couple of guys who were on the turf. There uh, sounds like the official says he's got it, and he does. It'll be first down, Aiken's first first down of the second half. If you're looking at the screen thinking it looks just absolutely perfect for football, you'd be right. Could not be a better night. A little bit of wind in the air, so not too hot for Nice John breeze, yeah. <laughs> We had a little bit of lightning off in the distance earlier, but it looks like that's uh, moved on, thank goodness. We do not want a repeat of week one. This time to the air, it is Corley airing it out, looking for Davion Goodwin. I should say he was looking for uh, Chavis, Charvis Jones, but it is picked off, and Richmond Academy again is going to take over and have great field position, and making the interception was guess who? D.T. Stevens, two games, two interceptions. Yep. Uh, look, he's an athlete. Like I said, you know, sometimes athletes, it doesn't matter what sport, if you're an athlete, stick them out there and let them make plays. And we've seen Stevens with a touchdown catch. We've seen him with two interceptions already this season, had one against Westside a week ago. So another turnover. Try to stop you. You Third. About it, A.B., they're not turnovers. A couple of them have been turnovers in, in the stat column. Yeah. But Aiken has called uh, – giving it back to the Musketeers on a couple of occasions. That makes four times tonight and the second interception of the evening for that Musketeer defense. Well, if Richmond Academy's line does a good job this season, they're going to make plays because they've got some athletes, whether it's Knowles or Stevens or Williams. They've got athletes on both sides of the ball in the skill positions. If those lines of scrimmage hold, holds up, we're going to see Richmond with a vastly improved record this year. And that was Knowles, and he got about six yards, takes it up to midfield. It'll be second. Yeah, get Call it, I'm going to say second and four. School board says five, but I think he's got about six on that one. There's Malik Knowles looking for his second straight 100-yard game to start the 2017 season. He'll get it again, this time to the right side, and he'll have another first down, down toward the Aiken 45-yard line. Aiken's got a man down back here. That is 
DeSalian Wilson, a 5'9 junior. And the officials will take time out here to allow the trainers to come out and talk to him. DeSalian Wilson, the injured Hornet, able to jog off under his own power, so he looks like he's all right. And the Hornets, will, or the Musketeers, I should say, will have it first and 10 from the Hornet 45-yard line. Trips to the right this time. And met at the line of scrimmage and dropped for a loss is Knowles making the stop for Aiken. Nick White, 5'10", just a sophomore, one of the many sophomores that get a lot of playing time for this Aiken defense. Yeah, coming off the bench, first time we've called his name tonight. Boy, did he look good right there. That's what, that's what you want your linebackers to do, fly into that hole, make a play, and that's exactly what he did. Lost a couple Caught on the, the quarterback. Play. It'll bring up second and 12 from just the other side of midfield. Out of the gun is Mason Cobb. Going to keep it. Made the first one miss. Got around the second one. Cobb across the 40 down to the 39-yard line. You know what I love about that play? Cobb's not a big guy, and he was going against a bigger defender, a David Neal. But at the end of that play, he lowered his shoulder. He didn't mm -hmm. try to get to the outside. He lowered his shoulder and tried to run over the defender. Nice run by Cobb. Known more as a passer, but looked good there. He ended up with six yards. It'll bring up third and four for the Musketeers. Again, Cobb out of the gun. And he will give to Knowles. Knowles is going to have the first down across the 35 and down to about the 32-yard line. Well, we saw the big play in the, the big plays in the first half, and we might see it again. But I know Coach Burns, and he's happy that his clock is running, and he's got a nice lead. Now down under six minutes, 543, and less than that to play in the third quarter. And the Musketeers in no hurry to get up to the line here. Saw one of the Aiken defenders with a huge bandage on his left hand right there in the middle of that defense. So we'll get another look at that at some point here. On first down, it is Knowles again. He's got room, 35, 20, 15. And down inside the 15-yard line before he's finally shoved out, it's going to be another first down for Knowles and this Richmond Academy offense that is rolling now. Good blocking downfield by wide receiver Tico Gowdy, who already has a touchdown tonight. You see on the end of the play, Gowdy's pushing his guy and shedding him from coming up and making a play. But I tell you, the little sophomore you mentioned a moment ago coming in white, I believe, with another nice tackle. Were it not for white, it might be 31-7 to now. On first down, it is Knowles again. Inside the 10. Up and it flips upside down at the two yard line, but I believe that's all going to be for naught. We have a flag down back at the 18. Check that. I believe that was. And it was, uh, that was actually Mondravius Taylor. Yeah, Taylor. Got to hold it. Off the hold. The hold will bring it back. Matt Lane down on the field tells us that that hold was on Isaiah Dorsey. Dorsey's had such a good game tonight defensively. I tell you, Taylor with some speed. You saw him spin it. Hold it. <laughs> Offense, 10 yard penalty, somersault. repeat first down. So they'll walk the penalty back and it'll be first and 20. Man. Reminiscent of the old Jets, uh, Dolphins, when Nat Moore, I believe it was Nat Moore that was flipped, either Nat Moore or Durrell Harris, one of the Dolphin receivers back in the day on a play that was really famous in NFL, used to always play it on Sundays leading into their games. On first and 10, it is Taylor. He'll get 15 of them back with a nice run. And a flag after the play. And let's see what that's all about. Well after the play. Maybe it's in some jawing over there. Unsportsmanlike. Yeah. And there was a hit that time. So the unsportsmanlike against Aiken. And that's the kind of thing that'll drive J.W. Montgomery crazy. You had the Musketeers backed up on first and 20. Let's we'll see if it was at the end of this play. And now with the penalty. What's been like on the defense after yeah, distance to the goal? End up giving the Musketeers not only the first down, but they'll be, it's half the distance to the goal line, so they're going to be first and goal at the five-yard line, A.B. Yeah, it must have been away from the ball because that looked like a pretty clean hit from Green. There's that flip play again, trying to get to the corner, and the ball is loose. 
and it, I think it rolled out of bounds. It sure was. Aiken had almost oh, had. They're going to say wow. Aiken football? Tough call. Oh, there. wow. They Close. are going to say Neil that recovered Nick, it, but. The, the, the Aiken recovered it, but from where we're sitting, it looked like that ball rolled out of bounds before they did. Wow. Be interested and to see the re. Here comes I the bet replay. The Academy coaches, because they have a great vantage point. I bet they are furious. That ball looked like it hit out of bounds. Let's see. Good work by the camera crew. Let's see. Yeah. He doesn't have it yet. It's on the line. Oh, it's close. But you know what? Out of bounds, but this ain't the NFL. You don't, right. no you don't have the replay, so it'll that be was, first and ten. It was closer than I thought. I yeah. will say that. I agree. I still think it was out of bounds. But big break for Aiken. Great work by our cameraman upstairs. And so Aiken with a huge break, and that's going to be a safety. And Richmond's going to get the ball back. So for the Musketeers, they got two points and the ball, so they'll take it. I believe it was seven, I'm trying, it was 75. It looked like Helen Weathers was the man that met him in the end zone. It was, the junior defensive tackle. And I mean, Weathers was just right there. So the two points for the safety will make it 26 to seven. Now we have one of those odd sounding scores. Matt's telling us that Green, the running back for Aiken, is kind of hobbling. He also plays defensive back. But you saw right there, Weathers was just Weathers made the play, but it was the other side of the defensive line that stopped the back and made him go into Weathers. So good job by that entire Richmond front on that play. And it'll be a free kick for Aiken. We'll check in with Matt Lane here in just a second. That's what play as a coach. You love it because you felt like the officials made a bad call whether they did or not. Who knows? But you feel like they did, and you're like, okay, guys, they got us, but we got it right back. Well, if that ball that Aiken recovered that was so close to being out of bounds was, in fact, out of bounds, the football gods have righted things now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, not only, and, and, hey, if you're Coach Burns, you're happy. Not only did, you got two points, but maybe more importantly, you're going to get the ball with a chance to eat more clock. I mean, they have really eaten this clock up in the third quarter. Taylor will bring it back for the Musketeers straight through the middle. Taylor all the way to the 32-yard line of Aiken. Again, playmakers. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's Gowdy, Taylor, D.T. Stevens, Clyde L. Williams, Cobb. They, they, you know, they keep course, running them at you. They, uh, they've got playmakers, and that's what I said. If their lines of scrimmage, offensive and defensive, play well this year, they've got a good kicker, they've got a good punter and picket, and he does both. And, of course, they've got playmakers. So Richmond Academy with a 19-point lead and the ball with 4-12 to play in the third quarter. And there was nothing fancy about this. He used to use his speed and went right up the middle with it. They formed that little kind of wedge, although not necessarily that. They don't do that anymore, but that's sort of what it looked like. It's Taylor again with daylight down inside the 10. Catch the flag back at the 23-yard line and Aiken already pointing, saying that the flag is on Richmond Academy. We have a man down for Aiken. I can't see his number. Well, Taylor shaking his head. He didn't like that that was called back after he had a nice, picked up some nice yardage. So that run will come back. Penalty on the offense, 10 yard penalty. Remains first down. Injury time out. Matt Lane tells us on the field that Coach Lyle Burns imploring his players to stay mentally strong here. Still can't figure out exactly who that is who was hurt on the field, but is number 18, we're told, from down on the field, and that is C.J. Hazel, who's a big part of the Aiken offense. He's a receiver. So we have a timeout on the field. We'll take it with them as uh, the Musketeers lead at 26-7 with 4.04 left to play in the third. After an incomplete pass, it is second and 11 for Richmond Academy. Knowles will get the carry. He'll get the corner. Made another man miss, and he'll push down inside the 20-yard line. And I believe he picked up the first down. It'll depend on the spot, but I believe he got it, and he does. I love the cut back to the middle of the field. Yep. You know, so many times you see backs just trying to get to the outside every time. You know, go ahead and pop it up in the middle, get those positive yards. Plus, he pushed the pile. And what I loved at the end of the play, John, when, the, when Aiken had about four or five defenders pushing him back, his offensive line came up there and was pushing back. I don't know that you saw that in the last few years at Richmond. Um, and they, these guys, th there's a sense of excitement. There's something in the air here for the Musketeers this year. In the air tonight? <laughs> that's, 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 that's Aiken. 
This is Cobb rolling, needs a man, got a man, broken up at the gut, like at the goal line. Yeah, nice play defensively. I, I think it was. I was screened. Let's see. It's Matt Lane tells us it was Mason Hall who made the the play for touchdown saving play for Aiken. Trying to go to Clyde L. Williams who had the touchdown run earlier in the game. Last week he caught a pair of touchdowns. Officials time out on the field. While they do that, let's uh, check in with Matt Lane down on the sidelines for another Augusta Auto Auction sideline report. Matt. Yeah, John, just kind of going back to uh, ARC and how impressive they looked on offense. Even though they're kind of losing the size battle, I know you guys have talked about how impressive Aiken looks not only on the uh, offensive and defensive lines, but really their skill players as well. But ARC, really the team that just has all the, not only momentum, but really the push each and every run like you guys are talking about. They're making sure they land on their face or they're pushing that pile a couple extra yards uh, no matter the size differential on the players. So really impressive by ARC to really take it to Aiken, not only in the first half, but even in the second half. And now it looks like we're going to have another timeout. This one will be Richmond Academy. Coach, La coach Lyle Burns, the uh, new coach here at Richmond Academy, who, by the way, not very happy right now with uh, uh, Isaiah Dorsey. Burns, with a win tonight, would go 2-0 to start his career here at Richmond Academy and join some very exclusive company, A.B. There's only one other coach in Richmond Academy history to go undefeated. Frank Inman. No, very close, very good guess. No, 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 back in 1910, Duncan McRae went 2-0 in his only two games with the Musketeers. So Lyle Burns can... More, apparently. John, John McRae. I got some more trivia coming up for you in the fourth I quarter, but let's wait. get some scores. Yeah, how about this? Washington County, this is going to surprise some folks if it holds. They lead in the third quarter over Burke County, 17-15. to 15. Also, Lincoln County has uh, stretched their lead over Grovetown to 10. It's 20-10, to 10. Lincoln County leads there. Uh, how about Glen Hills? Well, look good tonight. 16 zip over Cross Creek. Greenbrier now 27 nothing over Josie. Midland Valley trying to hang on. They lead Lugolf Elgin 2118. We'll have more sports coming up. We will see those Midland Valley Mustangs. Well, you will uh, a week from tonight here on Game Night Live. So second and ten and a half. And on the carry, it is Clydell White. But again, that's going to be negated and come back. There's a flag down. Well, that's the one thing Coach Burns is going to really harp on in this second half. Think about the penalties that have stopped their drives in this half. That's Kellen, Kellen Weathers guilty of the hold there. He's the one that made the big play on the safety in the end zone. Yeah. Like I said, though, Coach Burns is a throwback. I don't know how much Weathers is going to hear about that safety. I think he's going to hear a lot more <laughs> about that play. Unfortunately for Weathers, it, it, the safety happened before the penalty. Yeah. So now uh, it's second and – well, they pretty much need to go to 15th Street to get a first down. It's second about 22, it looks like. This time it's White on the keeper. He's going to get a big chunk of it back across the original line of scrimmage and almost to the 16, 15-yard line. Yeah, White, again, one of the, they've got about four or five of these interchangeable guys that are fast as lightning. And, you know, another nice run by White. Again, he was the quarterback last year, so he's very familiar with that spot, very comfortable back there. They are in the Augusta Technical College red zone. And important, more importantly, maybe for the Musketeers, getting that big chunk of yardage back. It's third and manageable now. Third and about seven. Keep, keep that clock a moving. That's the key, yeah. Now down to 220, and it continues to tick beyond, below that. White in at quarterback. The give is to Knowles. He'll be up close to the first down, still pushing the pile, and I think he'll be about a yard shy. And decision time now for Lyle Burns. Well, one thing we have seen A can do, and that's bringing a lot of guys off their bench and get playing time. That was DeJure Thomas who made the tackle. So the Ken Nugent one call, that's all moment for Lyle Burns, and I don't think he really had to think about it that much, honestly. No, I, I think you're going to see Knowles get the football or White run it out of that quarterback spot, one of those two for sure. I would I would probably say White just keeps it. Fourth and a long two. And another bad snap, but they are going to get rescued, I believe, by that flag. Full start. Offense. That's an instance where the penalty may actually they end up helping fourth down. Because that, that is at least four bad snaps we've seen. 
Well, it changes what they're going to do. Yep. They're going to bring on Pickett. <laughs> so, GMC kicks for college, and this is a pretty lengthy try here. Yeah, this is going to be a 36-yarder. And a bad snap. And another bad snap. And Judson Pickett does his best Yarrow Road premium trying to get the ball, but it's going to end up in the hands of, of Alex Thomas for Aiken. And the Hornets, with a big stop here, will take over at, the, at their own 35-yard line. Yeah, and again, miscues in this second half, whether it's penalties, bad snaps, as good as Richmond has looked, those are things that you're going to have to iron out when you get into the meat of your schedule this year. And I'll give credit where credit is due. Our good friend Matt Lane said this the previous play, but it still applies now about Coach Lyle Burns. Lyle doesn't love it. <laughs> not loving it. No, you can, no, you can send it. those emails to Matt McDonald's, Lane. At <laughs> we're loving it. Lyle, not loving it. So the Hornets take over now, down 19 with a minute and change left here in quarter number three. And the give is Green, who has their only touchdown of the night. This time he's going nowhere. And if you're aching, at some point you got to get a big play. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's going to be through the air, what it's going to be, but you got to do something to make a play. And we were talking about the coach harping on miscues, but I think Weathers is saying, hey, coach, that's two good plays <laughs> that you really need to take a look at. <laughs> He'll bring DVDs in on Monday. Yeah. See these? Yeah. Clock ticks under a minute now. And there's a bad snap for Aiken. Great play by uh, Corey Wallace to bring it down, but the play goes nowhere. Yeah, they brought Wallace back in. He was the original starter at quarterback. I tell you, the up front defensively, I gave him a hard time on that first drive when Aiken was pushing him around. But the defensive front, there you see some of the big guys. Weathers up there also, uh, big number 62. That's Justin Thomas. Those guys have done a real good job, 52 in there as well for ARC. And I believe the Hornets are going to be content to just let this thing quarter end before they snap the ball again. And that's exactly what they're going to do. So that'll do it for three quarters of play here at ARC Stadium. With your score, the homestanding Richmond Academy Musketeers 26, the Aiken Hornets 7, 12 minutes left to play. Got my, my leagues wrong here.